I V M. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to episode. <laughs> Forty-one. Forty-one of Agla Station Adulthood. I am Aritasha. I'm Ayushi, and we are still at home. Exactly. Even though there is mission begin again, unlock one point o, lockdown five point o. Not even get me started on that. We must be the All. only country that opens up as the cases start to spike. <laughs> Coffee. Dark 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 crazy. Dark. Coffee crazy scene. Chal raha hai. Uh, Hope everybody is taking necessary precautions and staying at home unless absolutely necessary. If you can afford to stay at home, please do. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, we've been good by and large. Let's continue that. Anyway, we don't want to spend any more time talking. Ah, 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 ah. Ayushi, what a brilliant segue! I love it. <laughs> you know, when I was younger, I thought segue was said as seg. Seg you, yeah, like oh, seg. a seg, seg you, seg gay, seg because it's such a weird spelling. But anyway, because that is not how one must pronounce segue. Correct, I agree with you. Right, and when I think of segue, I think of those uh, bikes, those correct those segue tours that people take. Correct. By the way, if you're taking a segue tour, please know that I think you're an idiot. I'm sorry, I just do. Uh, okay, now now that we've covered that, I don't think anybody is going to be taking any segue tours anytime soon. I know, but uh, I use a podcast to my trigger. Yes. So this is, Please, a, this is on my trigger list. You can refer to our travel episode if you still haven't. And we'll talk about other stuff there. Uh, not segueing. So time. But, yeah. Um, we wanted to talk about this. Uh, actually, let me give you a real background of how this topic came about. A, we've had an abundance of time at hand, even though we, you know, Uh, we're working. We're doing us. We're doing our household um, chores and activities and keeping busy. But you have to admit, suddenly there is a lot more time on all of our hands, and it's all from because the commute is cut. Yes, and, exactly. That dead yes. space time, you know, which was spent yeah. doing things that now we're not doing because you're stationary. Yeah. So we were like, oh, you know, we have a lot of time, and then we started thinking, oh, may- maybe just time. Like time is a concept. Time is a whole. As a as a, A, a time period, or even if you're talking about how how you interact with time, that's something yeah. that you talk about. And as young adults, I think it's important to evaluate how you're using your time because absolutely that kind of defines what you're doing with these formative years, right? I still think yeah. these are formative years. I don't just think of that for children. No, hundred so percent here. Yeah. And then Tash shared a really cool article on uh, two kinds of time or how. How we can look at time in terms of experience. So, do yeah. you want to explain that? Okay, so basically, I will give some context. Yes. So, um, the article is written by a woman named Anne Bogart, and she is one of uh, the greatest uh, theater directors in the world. Uh, and she invented one of my favorite training techniques called viewpoints. So, if anyone's interested in the performing arts, definitely check her out. But she had. Um, Put out a blog post back in 2016 uh, titled "How to Embody Time." Right. So in this, she kind of covers um, basically how she deals with. Uh, so time is one of the points of viewpoints, also. So I'm going to talk about it from a performer's point of view, but applicable in real life. So there is an inner rhythm and an outer rhythm of the world, and by rhythm I mean pace or the duration or the time. Or the energy, whatever it is. So we always have our own inner pace, and then there's the pace of the world around us. And she talks right. about how she is a warrior and a slightly rushed person by nature. Mm-hmm. So time functions at a higher pace within her. Her internal time is higher. So then she went through an experience and met some people. Who seem to be existing in a different kind of time, energy, space within themselves. So it was like the air of rush had left. There was a sense of ease. You may be doing the same thing with the same efficiency, but that sense of rushing or uh, wanting to finish it off quickly and move on to the next thing that went. 
So she speaks about two kinds of time, which is horizontal time and vertical time. Now, this part was particularly interesting to me. So I'm going to read out a part of this uh, post because I think that's good for you. All right. <laughs> when busy, when trying to get from where I am to where I want to be, I'm generally living in horizontal time. Horizontal time is linear and has a past that is remembered and a future that is imagined. Horizontal time can make me feel under pressure and slight and insignificant. Vertical time, in contrast, may contain horizontal time, but it also intersects and disrupts the experience of linear time. Vertical time arrives in small doses and has no past and no future outside of the present moment. In vertical time, nowness is absolutely real and non-divisible. Experiencing vertical time, I am more awake. I feel more and see more. I notice the mist rising off of a meadow. I taste each sip in a cup of fragrant afternoon tea. I can fully enjoy an aimless walk at sunset. It is in vertical time that the conditions are ripe to experience epiphany. So Anne says this and I couldn't agree more because for a performer also, like when you're on stage, that's all it's about being in the present, in the nowness of the moment and how horizontal time seems to suspend. Even like I think art is a great way to look at it. You know, Aisha, you read this, that part also. I, this is something that I really connected with and it was the best way to un, best way to understand um, this whole horizontal vertical time difference. So say now, tell our listeners. Oh, Okay. Um, from what I understood, the way she just said it was, uh, so assume in a very literal, if you can uh, visualize this, if you have the bar graph of horizontal time, um, art, like A-R-T, art is what drops an anchor in that horizontal and linear time flow and creates a sense of eternity. And yeah. it creates that little potential infinite now type of feeling. And I think a great way of describing it, which is something that she referred to as well, was, you know, perhaps when you're standing in front of a really moving or um, a beautiful painting. Hmm. In that moment, time is suspended. It has, that art has dropped an anchor in your linear time. And, and in that drop where it has, you know, taken root, you now have created a little infinite bubble where yeah. I'm almost stand still because you're there, you're engaging with this art on a different level and nothing else matters. Everything slips away. It ceases to exist. And that is how art can actually stop time for you. And yeah. And, that's, and she's even spoken about how music does that. Yes, and I think yes. that's so true because then what she's written is that it's impossible to like when you're in the flow of a piece of art you can reach a place where there's no differentiation between past, present and future. There's like a moment where like everything just kind of stops. And that's what like resets and refreshes the human mind. I think it's absolutely true. And in yeah. fact, art in general, plus and music, poetry, writing has that very evocative nature where not only, I mean, in fact, she was saying it in this way that it takes you to a timeless place. I saw it in another way when I started reading this. I was like, in fact, for me, it stops time, it brings me back to a time or it takes me to a time that I'd like to go to. And mm. it's almost, I think art is very close to time travel, you know, because you are taken to another place. Yeah, that's so true also. That's and, a nice way of looking at it. Yeah, and so it, in the way of, uh, I don't want to say it's an escapist route, but it is because I think as adults, Sometimes engaging with art is the only way that you can run away from certain things or escape a situation or leave your reality because as an adult, there are so many things that are tying you down to your physical surroundings and your bearings and your responsibilities that you have that very often it's, it's hard to escape it. And I think art in a way lets you escape time sometimes. Is, is that making sense to you? I think that does make sense. But and also like just in terms of art provides that much needed escapism. Yes, but a break, a break. Yeah. And 
I think what art really does is it feeds the human, of course, human, the human itself, like the soul itself in ways we can't articulate or really intellectually comprehend. But I promise you, if I shouldn't say I promise you, I pro- what I'm trying to say is that I'm pretty sure that while you're listening to us talk about this, your brain has sort of reached out to a piece of art that or a moment with or, any kind yeah. of artist experience exactly. that, I don't mean a painting only when I say art yeah, in all yeah. films, where yeah. you immediately feel like yeah no that that made me stop that made me yeah. put something down that made me feel refueled and replenished and sort of like a plant in the rain you know that's kind of how I feel when I read something really good or I see a painting that just absolutely blows my mind is I feel like a little like a podha you know when the monsoon comes yeah. I'm like oh, yeah. oh, it's Love so it. nice but, really love and I know this is sounding more like it's about art than it is about time. But it's all linked because yes. time is ek toh humne banaya hai. Excuse me. Let's just address that uh, well, elephant in the room. I will end this episode by giving us a nice lit- uh, little literal um, <laughs> information about time. Like actually like samay. <laughs> I love it. I love what it. Samay. I have. I have. Um, a little fun, fun little thing. To fun facts about with. time. I can't wait. Oh That's my god! Fact, it's something to discuss, I think, but we can end with that. Um, okay. And I think the reason we wanted to talk about time and, and art, and this is sort of an interesting another segue, if you will, mm. is that time is often defined by art. Yeah. No. Of now, course. I'm, now I'm talking yeah. about time, like periods, right? Like a time period is defined by uh, like the art or a belief that comes out of it or the ideas that come out of it. And obviously I am now moving towards my favorite word in the human dictionary, zeitgeist. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I love it loves so, it. so much. I love it so much. I'm always looking for ways to like use, to use it. it. it in, this whole episode is a dedication to this one word, zeitgeist. Yeah. So talk about it. a zeitgeist. But, and if you don't really know what zeitgeist means, please let me tell you. It's I basically like the defining spirit or like a mood of a, of a particular period in history. And it's reflected in the ideas and the beliefs and the art and the thought of that time. So a very, uh, like a very easy example, which is basically even on Wikipedia is like free love, the progressive movement, hippies. That was mm. all like the zeitgeist of the 1960s. Yeah. You know, so that time was defined by that art. That time was defined by those thoughts. So when we're thinking of time, like literally like you and me, what got me very interested is to think, what is it that defines our time? What is the zeitgeist of our time? Uh, coronavirus. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> I know that in the in the more recent time, this is going to be something that's obviously going to become a huge historical turning point for us. Like when, yeah. when kids study it, they will be like 2020 was, oh my God, it was a virus. But what spoke to me more, as you know, it always speaks to me more, mm. is the politics. <laughs> so true. And what's very interesting is now in academic uh, discourse and general like discussion of our time, People are calling it like the age of the protests, like the great war yeah. protest. Because yeah. I would say from the end of 2017 till 2020. Yeah, the world has seen at large quite a lot of. Yeah. And it's not just like yeah. the ones that you, um, it's not only the protests that you see on TV or in the news in passing. Yeah. Yeah. protests are like long sustained movements yeah. that go on for months sometimes and for them to have any actual um, you know, uh, like an end goal. It's way more yeah. than just a week. You know what I mean? Mm. And not to talk for too long on this, but I just wanted to quickly list you the protests that have happened in the last two years. Just so Please. you know, because yeah. even I have missed a few of these, I feel. Yeah. Okay. November 2018, you had the protests in France, which was the Yellow Vest Movement. Um, in December 2018, you had the coup d'etat in Sudan. 
in mm. 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, up till now, you've obviously had the entire Brexit process, which has led yeah. to many different kinds of protests throughout the years, all based on the EU and Brexit. Then in March of 2019, you had the start of the Hong Kong protests. Yeah. In July 2019, you had protests in uh, Russia, in Moscow specifically. In September 2019, you had protests in Egypt, where they wanted to remove the president, LCC. In October 2019, you had protests in Iraq. You had protests in Catalonia, where they wanted independence from Spain. You had protests wow. in Chile. Again, this is all still in October because the metro cost and the general cost of living went up. There were protests in Lebanon that started because of the tax. There were protests in Bolivia based on electoral fraud. In November 9, 2019, you had protests in Iran where they actually considered overthrowing the Al Khamenei. Like, oh my good God, his Holy Highness. And then in December 2019, in India, you had the anti CAA. Yeah. Uh, NCR, um, sorry, NRC, NRC. Oh my God, NRC protests. And yeah. then May 2020 in America, now globally, you are seeing yeah. these protests against uh, general racism, the Black Lives Matter movement, all yeah. because of the death of George Floyd and countless other people. Yeah. So just think, I've been talking for about two minutes now. This is just listing the big ones. This exactly. Is, and this is not even everything that's been going on. Yeah, Absolutely not. And each one of them is because people are tired of, you know, being either overtaxed or they are, they feel like they're paying too much and not getting enough returns in terms of social and public services and health services. You have political um, corruption, fraud, like elections that have been, um, you know, what is it called? What is the word? But thrown, right? Or bought. And, huh. and you have people who are so, so unhappy with their leaders yeah. who want to overthrow them. There's been like yeah. government policies that have come into place that people just cannot get behind, like in our own country. And all you are seeing and something that we see now on a daily basis, and I really feel this is what is going to define our time of being young adults, is just how much we are dissatisfied with the status quo. Yeah. And yeah. it is, I don't, and I know that this, I mean, it's not a controversial thing to say, but I don't know whether this is entirely a good thing or a bad thing. You know? Time will tell, Ayushi. I mean, we can all agree, I think, that there has been a really messed up underlying system that has been, Absolutely. in the world at large Absolutely. and I think somewhere now because of exposure the strength in numbers and the, the growth of these movements and of course it is because of the internet of course 100%. I don't have to keep saying the I word every time <laughs> so because of that I think there will be a systemic change at some point and I think all of this is going to be the it's just another brick towards that wall, which is, I think, I think, I don't know. I think in the long run, I think it's all great. It's for the better. Look, this is the kind of stuff. I think this is the kind of time period that when Correct. you look back 50 years later, you're like, oh, this is when it all changed. This is the start exactly. of, you know, history now is going to pivot. Our human history, our collective human history is going to pivot in a different direction. And that is the hope, right? That it, that we're moving towards a more egalitarian, a more fair, a more equal, like we're looking for that brotherhood, fraternity, equality now. Yeah. Yeah. And while we've always been geared towards it and working towards it, I think this is a severe demand from social structures to actually follow through on those things, mm -hmm. which you perhaps didn't see before because of, I don't know, maybe there was a disjointedness in your communities, in your society where you couldn't really yeah. bridge these gaps. But now, whether I think when you talk about things like race and religion and um, and and access to public goods and services, that's a very um, equalizing thing, you know? Yeah. And it's brought everyone to their knees. And it's so weird, though, because if you think about it, we kept thinking of like coronavirus and COVID as this great equalizer because there was no... Um, telling that whether a rich person or a poor person suffers any more or less. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
But look at all these other things that are also humbling us and sort of bringing us to our knees and mm. saying, this must stop, this must end. And this, and it might not sound like I'm saying anything concrete right now. It sounds like I'm rambling, but this is who we are. Like, this is what's going to define you and me as a generation. Yeah, I guess. I mean, but also, you know, actually, I don't know. Was it like this also at the time of our parents in their 20s? Was stuff going down, which was wild? I'm sure there was. But, um, but you know, there were so many countries that were still in the in the process of developing and exactly, coming out yeah. to the world yeah. and, you know, embracing yeah. capitalism, getting things like free press and media and like, you know, a lot of different arts and culture and all of that, like sort of globalization was starting to kick off. That's then, true. Yeah, know? that is true. Yeah. We live so in a then, way more melted pot than they did. 100%. And in this melting pot and melted pot, I think, um, yeah, there's only one way we can go and it's it's good. We it's gonna be this time. It's like we, I think our we our generation has chosen the pen and the sword. Lol, yeah, and the stylus for the digital. Uh, like we've we've screen. decided that whatever we can get our hands on, we're gonna use it all. Yeah, because I think people are tired of just being like, "Oh, use your words, only use your words," because it hasn't worked. So I think our our time as young adults. Anyway, let's take a break. Let's let's take a break here because I think we're going to yes. get into something else now. Yeah, but you want to finish that thought about our time as young adults? Oh, okay, that's the other thought. Yeah, sort of. Okay, okay, friends. We'll see you on the other side. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Paytm Money. It really has been a great week this week. We've had two of our first international cricketers show uh, people who have played for their respective sides. We had WV Raman come on Edges and Sledges, the cricket podcast. If you haven't heard that, you should be listening to that if you enjoy cricket. It's really one of the best out there. And you should also definitely check out Monty Panisar, who showed up on Cyrus Says. Uh, that was another really interesting conversation that occurred. If you haven't been listening to a few of our shorter shows, please do that as well. Ashish Vidyarthi has been doing a great job for us. we got 30 episodes now on Begin the Journey. I think you really enjoyed that show. If you haven't listened to it, it helps you with like, you know, understanding what's going on in this tough time and how do you deal with it from a mental health perspective. We've also had some really fun stuff come up on the Smile India show. Shifa has been doing a lot of really good stories over there. Things would just make you happy. So definitely do check that out. And on the more serious side, make sure that you're checking out our regular shows like the Pragati podcast, All Things Policy. They're definitely going to keep you up to date on what's going on in this COVID world. And with that, let's get you on with your show. Yo. Oh, hi. Welcome back. We're back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're back. We're back. What was I saying? Wow. We were talking about this time. Right. For let's, us well, let's talk about my attention span problem because that's also another time problem. However. Is it the time of the day? It's making you sleepy. Are you tired? We have to work out now, so I can't be. Oh, tired. God. <laughs> I can't afford to be tired. Week 12, Ayushi, we made it. We're nearly there. But. We're nearly there, yeah. To get back to what we were talking about, when I was saying that our time as adults, I think it's affected me on a deeper level. And I think it's something that we, as a group of people living through this, as young people, we are going to carry this with us for a really long time. We're going to carry think, this fuel yeah. of this of being angry and that outrage and wanting more and demanding more and wanting to fight and having that fire against you against I mean in you against a system against the quote unquote oppressor whoever that is to you in shape and form. Yeah, like we're going to carry this, and this is it makes me think that every generation carries some of different kinds of trauma with them. Yeah, and hear me out on this. It's something that I've been. Uh, I was reading because I finally finished um, Ramchandra Gua's book about mm. you know history of India, and then also talking to my parents and my grandparents, and I realized something, which I think is a very obvious realization that a lot of people have made. So it's not brand new. I fully say that is that I don't think our country ever got over even partition. Yeah, like we didn't get mm. over that time. We didn't heal. After yeah. that, we didn't hear yeah. after 200 years of being a, a colony. Yeah, 
we have so much stuff to heal from yaar as a country and th- and that's why and you know because in in my gra- in our grandparents time and our great grandparents time that was the time they saw so their yeah. interaction with the world after that is based on that time so yeah. they are predisposed to either hate or be biased against communities because that's all they saw that's what their yeah. time is full of yeah so they carried that with them and then whether they liked it or not they passed on along uh, passed it along a little bit you know to the next generation and it makes me think that before that there was the people who came back like the baby boomers they came or even you know they came back from world war 2 you had an entire generation of people in the west and in europe who were truly traumatized from yeah. the extended like two decades three four decades of war yeah and i think when i talk about time like in this way in this bigger way is that we are going to carry this and so we have to decide how we're going to pass this on to our children or to the next like do we just tell them that the only way to get change is to rail against a system or do you want to give them that alternative of no it's like through peaceful protest and then getting involved with the system and changing it from within or i i don't know like i I think I'm concerned and I keep thinking about it again and again I'm like how am I going to tell my kids about this how am but I at least one that? good thing that's going to be there and I feel will actually help the generation to come is the kind of openness that we are now moving towards as a young generation yeah, of right. educated urban or uh, from whichever parts of uh, the country and the world this generation is moving towards a more open and inclusive nature i think collectively if we if we play our cards right and if we keep at it yes. i think there will be a generational change of mindset to a large extent not 100% of course because that's not possible but to a large extent where the next generation will at least learn in childhood as soon as they are born what we learned in our 20s you understand yes you're right you're right and that's when the change will come because it would be a normal thing by then the mindsets would have changed of our generation hence it would not even be a thing i think to like like how do you tell your kids or how do you exp- i think it would be in the way we live our lives for example a simple show like shit's creek ayushi can we just talk right. about it for a second always um, always so the homosexuality angle the same sex love story in that uh-huh. is never treated by the family and never addressed as how in other like if we were watching a hindi no, movie or a hindi show it's the most normalized uh it's so normalized and i love exactly. it exactly which th- this is my point so we are already there ayushi i feel like if a show like that exists which is already successfully exists my dad and i know like i do anyone who has seen the last uh, episode will know that the show has done a lot for the uh, lgbtqi community at large to give them a voice and it's just fabulous for that so it's that sort of thing where it's so normal that you don't even have to address it or talk about it or think about it because it is now in our practiced everyday lives to be inclusive and to be equal So yeah that's it my my bhashan ends there sorry no 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 it's not a ba- i mean i think that's first of all that's very true what you're saying is that um in general our children are going to grow up in a far more equal and um inclusive world than we grew up in like the fact that we only normalized conversations about the possibility that we could like that our friends could be homosexual and not tell us about it hmm like You know in school we never even talked about those things. We didn't even entertain the notion that Yeah, but now I think even kids in this generation teenagers have more access. Parents are being more open to having conversations about sexuality and that's great. Exactly. That's- and that and I want to say that maybe that's the result of the time that came before that of all the people like who truly pioneered and fought yes, physically absolutely absolutely for these rights and this normalcy yeah. to become a part of our life mm. and so in that grander scheme of things i'm like while there are i think there's trauma that you carry from huge 
changes in in history and huge like societal changes i think we all carry a lot of trauma because you don't you don't think about it but it's in your subconscious i fully believe that we yeah. get to also take on all this good stuff and pass that along and so i think yeah. the aim of the episode or kind of the what i want to the adult to take away here the what i want to tell young adults as we grow up is it is hurtful to see the sort of the travesty of how our system used to be like to see how much oppression exists how much racism how much homophobia how much xenophobia how much like uh, you know the anti communalness and uh, like against the whole like religion religious aspect that we constantly have to deal with in our country like hmm all of that it is traumatizing it is it's jarring it's disturbing to see it and it's hurtful because it exhausts you it is exhausting yeah. yeah but i think what the adult thing is to to take that in to be like yes this is information that i should have like do not ignore it i think that's the worst thing you can do is ignore that these changes are happening i think definitely yeah. acknowledge it read engage with it but the takeaway has to be that when you have your kids and and you have your family and you get to create a new community you set the new rules for it you get to define that time and this needn't even be like an actual family of like a uh, spouse and children and I'm, like a community it, right like what yeah what's yeah. next whether it's yeah. a community at work whether it's an art like a community that you've built through a common yeah. practice or art or whatever it is what do you get to pass on exactly Based on yeah your time on earth like you've taken all this collective memory like this is your memory now everyone like this this time that we've spent sitting at home or watching these protests or living through it in our own country in the last couple months this is our time yeah and nobody can take that away from you but you have to decide what you do with it and i know oh, that's like a really heavy thing to say but yeah that's like really heavy <laughs> no i don't mean like oh use your time productively i don't mean that i mean yeah, you should but that's like a different episode that was more like what we were talking about like that slow movement and like cherish yeah. your thing like i i'm not talking about the activity of spending your time i mean like what have you taken away from this time yeah how does time change you as a person is very important to reflect yes. and what it's no i i think i think i'm i'm happy about this like i'm i'm right about this i i believe that and i welcome a debate or a conversation on it but i think it's really important for our age group of this 20s 30s time to look at this time around us and say hey look this is what was going on this is everything that i saw in my 20s this is yeah. what was happening in the world this is where people were what they were fighting for so that when you get to pass this along in whatever form whether it's through your art your work your family your community your religious group your friends group look at what you get to share and what you get to give and be responsible about that i think 100% you see yeah. all these kids going out on the street you see people with disabilities you see people who fought wars you're seeing and i'm not just talking about like america i'm talking about our own country like the amount of the the people that came out onto the streets protesting against government policies that they weren't okay yeah. with that they didn't stand for you and i like if you don't mm. believe in something we are from that thing that was like okay if you don't agree with this we're going to go out there and say something mm. so i i want that yeah. to be my time like i i'm i want that to be my time I, yeah i mean i don't at all disagree with you i think it's a very important part of the journey of adulthood also because at this point in our lives this time is not only us in our insular bubbles yes. there is a whole ecosystem if you will that is connected to us whether it is our immediate community or the global community at large the world is much smaller now of course it is yaar yeah, ayushi this is so like these are formative years 
and when you say that it's a different kind of formative you know what i mean yes that's 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 what i was talking about when i first said formative yeah. i don't mean child yeah. formative i mean this no this these form, are the formative yes this yes. forms you're like this mental like of scaffolding right yeah, absolutely this is yeah. this is all the stuff that makes your building this this is the time you spend basically so that you don't become those aunties and uncles that you bitch about now exactly exactly we have yeah. been given this time like you know that meme that's going around that maybe 2020 is a curse maybe 2020 is a this it's a that yeah yeah okay mm-hmm. just, i some just, days i'm kind of like you know just you can f off yeah. meme but covid just fall off <laughs> you this and you're like yes in fact though it was a gift it's a gift that's been given to us and we have to we have to make sure that that is a present that we give on to someone else that we pass along whether it's through your work or through your words you must not forget that this is now part of our collective mental history yep aishi now i'm done with this bhari chat can you please give me some fun trivia or whatever you have yeah, yeah, I'm done with it i'm just saying that this one this affected me like this episode thinking about it talking about it oh it's really intense maybe that's why i'm trying to escape right now sorry Yeah, I'm back. No, you, we can we we don't have to continue talking about it. But I just I I want like on a personal note, I would like our listeners to think about these things. And I'm not saying that you don't think about them, or I don't mean that in a like a like in a patronizing way. I mean it more like I have great respect for the young people in our country and world over. and that's why I, i i want people to think about this stuff like don't just say oh my god it's getting too much it's too political it's too much it's too much it's too much to keep in i know it is but this is what this time is so don't ostrich it like don't put your head in the ground and let it all happen around you engage with yeah. it and i because this is this is going to be who we are i promise you this is going to affect everything you do from now on it will Mark it's going to formative you it's going to formative your years so on that note i will now give you a literal <laughs> um uh anecdote not an anecdote a thing i'm telling you a little thing about time okay um, so something that maybe okay basically time zones in india like actually huh. time zones <laughs> because you're talking about time um <laughs> So in, there are two, na? Calcutta is in a different time zone, actually. I, I mean, it's not actually, but it should be. Oh, it should be correct. That's what I mean. I was about to be like Dash. What are you saying? But I'm sorry. No, but basically, like east to west, uh, or I should actually say, if you look, yeah, correct, east to west in terms of time. India is about three thousand kilometers wide. Okay, so yeah, that's about that's thirty so degrees large. in longitude that we we cr- we. fall across we cross yeah, yeah we fall we cover that much which is roughly a two hour time difference coast to coast <laughs> not coast to coast, sorry point to point end to end right not coast to coast correct okay so that's incredibly crazy it's like saying in america like new york and omaha would have the same time zone that's not even like if you want it is not possible right yeah so, in the same thing it was it, this was something that was left over from the british time from a colonial time that we'd have one time zone and as you know like bangladesh comes in the middle of us and they have their own time and then again the states are on the other side of bangladesh still follow india standard time <laughs> no i'm not kidding like that's incredible it's crazy there's another country in the middle of your country that has another time zone so this is just proving hence prove that time is just something we have made up to just be like chalo karte hain exactly. so this thing is great con- is totally a construct where is the time that i have been like yammering about for the last 30 minutes is the one that you guys should be paying attention to yeah so i am right science gmt greenwich meridian time you are wrong <laughs> आप लोग तो कुछ भी बना दिया ऐसे लाइंस बना दी ग्लोब पे बोल रहे ये है इंटरनेशनल डेट लाइन मींस व्हाट सो um there's a lot of debate and as recently as in like 2019 a debate on a governmental level as well where there's been a lot of lobbying to create two different time zones for india wild what could happen yeah so the, this guy uh, molik jagnani he's an economist uh, who i think he teaches and practices at cornell 
uh, he wrote and he's been researching on this and he's done a lot of he's written a lot of papers on it basically his thing is the human capital gain that could be made from having two time zones is close to four and a half billion US dollars which is about 0.22 or three percent of our GDP which might seem small but that's a huge human capital gain to be made just from having a time zone difference right how would that happen though I'm confused right so the reason why he says that is because it actually affects efficiency and da -da -da -da, it affects the least and most margin uh, it affects the most marginalized people yes. in your society i.e um people who are poor or definitely live in financial stress yeah here's how because people in the east even though they like, now just think of like how the sun rises okay so the sun rises damn early the, for them though. yeah it rises very very early for them however 6 a.m is still 6 a.m so even though the sun has risen two hours before they their 6 a.m is at the same time that my 6 a.m is which yeah. means that their day also ends way into the darkness before ours does. Yeah. So if you're following what I'm saying is basically people in the East use more electricity okay. than we do. Yeah, because they have to stay awake till us, uh, till we reach night. Exactly. And because it gets darker already, you land up burning more electricity, which obviously affects people obviously. Um, in, finan in a financial way because yeah. of your bill. Also, access to electricity in yeah. a country like ours is not always always so foolproof and like a hundred percent guaranteed even though a lot of gains have been made in the last uh, couple last decade at least but it, it, think about it like if you you just have somebody in Calcutta just uses two more hours of electricity every single day than you do that's really like trippy Ayushi I'm shook by this and I also support this movement we should have two time zones and something that you are going to like because you love to sleep is <laughs> that this time zone thing it throws off your human sleep cycle or your like your circadian rhythm goes yeah. off because as you know like your brain creates more melatonin the more it starts to get darker outside and the day Correct. the day goes on and melatonin helps you go to sleep and it dulls you a little bit and kind of slows you down puts you in a little bit of a slumber so in fact at that time when it when you would say oh it's only four o'clock it's the middle of the work day People in the East are truly fading in the way that they're exhausted because their body, their natural rhythm is, this telling, them, rhythm is telling them to now chill out. It's time for it's time unwinding. Be, yeah, it's time to be done yeah. with work. It's time to like go and maybe spend time with your family. And means that if you work till 8 o'clock in Calcutta, you're exhausted because your body is just slowed down by them because it's been dark yeah. now for about four or five hours. No, no, sleep is key. And again, sleep when it, when you have a lack of sleep, we've talked about this, your brain completely goes... Oh my sleep. God, guys, it's bad for health, period. Exactly. And who gets the most affected by this? The most... Me. In society. Not just... Oh, oh no, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were chatting about uh, sleep. No, and but how like we, poor yeah. people because yes. Oh, yes, my, they don't my, live my, in my. environments where you have homes which have like blinds or shades or separate rooms or like creating yeah. these uh, internal clock systems where you can like you know uh, sleep through whatever exactly, exactly. No, of course this I understand doesn't work. so who gets affected by this is children children who go to yeah, school there's a lot and of studies to say that they actually suffer on a proper like academic level of course their productivity is only not gonna be heightened because exactly. of the exactly yeah absolutely Ayushi let's rally for this so there's a lot of um data and statistics and even from our own government that kind of backs this idea that you should consider having two time zones because the country is very wide literally yeah. um, I don't think we've ever I know it, it sounds really weird to think that oh uh, a city like I'm not I'm not even talking actually about Calcutta because they're still close to the mainland I'm talking about like say the far like the east like your seven sisters yeah to think that they would be in a different time zone but I think once you get used to the idea it's the same thing as like Chicago and Los Angeles and New York being different or Paris and London being different. Yeah. Or and what's the deal with Russia? They also have many time zones. No? They have the most. Very big in Russia. It's very big in very Russia. Big. Ah, but okay. So this is a this is something to end your time episode by being like literally some people in our country have less time. That's wild. Think about it. Something to That's think wild. about. Yeah. 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 And 
So if you start seeing that as a discussion around you, um, think about it. it. It's not without its arguments. It's not without its... Of course, it's quite substantial. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of substantialness sense. to it. Um, some substance. Who, what is substantialness? Wow, wow. I, <laughs> I, I think it's time for us to wrap it up. Yeah, so... Just a last thing, tea gardens in Assam already do this, by the way. They have informally decided that they will work according to like the sun's time and not Obviously, time of tea. Yeah. Because then, it's all with harvesting. Yeah. That's why. I agree. The sun is the final authority on all this. Please. Hum kaun hote? I know. Who are you to stand in front of the sun? And be like, no. <laughs> no, man. Go to sleep. It's only 6 a.m. But Actually, the sun's like, bro, oh, it's really bright. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. My bad. No, but the other way for us. But anyway, you guys understand. Uh, if this was a heavy episode, I do not apologize. I think it's important. No, man. I enjoyed it and I hope you did too. Time, time, time. Read about it. I'm going to share the article also uh, yeah, by Anne. Do that, do that. Oh, especially artists and performers. I urge you to read it. And uh, otherwise, also, please think about all of these things if you don't already. And if you don't, no problem. Write to us. We love to read your massages. And... Um, just to throw back to the first thing that you we were talking about, find the time to create those little anchors in linear time. 100%. Like create Let, those little infinite yeah. pockets for yourself. I think we should do this. You sh- guys share with us in your week where you manage to get a moment of vertical time. Ah, yes, house. yes. Even I will share mine and you will share yours and then our 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 listeners will share theirs. Yes. And you know, when we start these things on Instagram, we're like, we want you to share with us. Please actually do it because it's really embarrassing when we start to do it and then no one sends us anything. And, we're and like, then we have to make <laughs> our friends do it. Excuse me. Yeah, kids. Get involved, fam. We are the Agla Station Adulthood fam. You listeners are like part of this universe now. You have no exit. You're trapped by our love. That that was the most non-threatening yet threatening sentence. Like that, that sentence was a roller coaster. You are trapped by my love. <laughs> Very Stockholm syndrome. Um, but please participate, note, guys. Thanks, yeah. We yeah, love yeah, you all. Yeah, Thanks. Please. Chalo, chalo. Okay. If you like this podcast, please uh, don't forget to listen to all the other podcasts. They are all available on the IVM Podcast app or on IVMPodcast.com. Hai na? And they are on Twitter and Instagram as the IVM Podcasts. Yeah, that's it. And I'm at RYTASH. You can uh, message me on Instagram. I love it. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Just Ayushi. And then on Instagram, I'm at AyushiA9. Bye-bye. It's time to say farewell next time. See you guys next week. Namaskar. This is Ashish Vidyarthi. Yes, my friend, these are challenging times. But in these challenging times, we can create something extraordinary. Do take time to listen to my podcast, Begin the Journey. Available on the IVM Podcast, website, app, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Remember... We have a great opportunity called life. Cheers. Beta, did you know 79% of all scientists in NASA are Indian only? Dekho, India mein tax sirf middle class bharti hai. Everyone is just enjoying free yaar. Aaj kal ke youngsters are only interested in partying and enjoying. Unko desh ki padi hi nahi hai. Beta, tum bas shadi kar lo. Uske baad to you can enjoy life like anything. I will tell you what this country needs. This country needs 15 years of dictatorship. That is the only, the only way to become a superpower. See the Chinese, how much they've progressed. So now tumne ye WhatsApp forward dekha. So what's common between all of these statements? They're all absolutely rubbish. Fake WhatsApp forwards that spread like wildfire. And statements that defy any logic. We are here to debunk them all. Where your family WhatsApp groups? Worst nightmare. Where what happens when you read a book? Basically, we're just a bunch of guys who want to cut through the bullshit of everyone saying this, how it won't be true. So that the next time someone confidently squeezes out some WhatsApp or Twitter BS, you will look them dead in the eye and go, Uncle... Please sit. So join me, Joel. And me, Tushar. Every Mondays for a fresh new episode of Uncle, Please Sit.